hello again, this is Mr. Steel, and I'm going to now attempt to graph a tangent function that has a little bit of everything. And after kind of making through all the lessons and kind of practicing and working on all the different trig functions, I really think tangent's probably the most difficult of the batch. So it's not really the analysis that's hard, but it's fitting it onto the graph and, you know, feeling like you really do have two full periods graphed and not like partial periods where, it, you know, you technically have two, but you really want to make sure you get that cool stink line shape on there. So um, I'm going to go through it. Can't promise it'll be perfect, but um, I'll give it a shot. So first, looking at the graphing Tanifesto over here for your reference. Um, the first thing I want to do is the artistry. So we've got to think about the shape and whether it's reflected or not. So the first thing I'm doing here, I'm not going to write anything down just yet, is, you know, it's plus six tangent. So this is a positive one. It's a positive tangent, meaning we're going to have positive stink lines. So our shape for tangent goes through the origin. So, or it goes through the center, and then has vertical asymptotes. So, less than like that. So that's what we want to do, is we want to graph that shape. Now in order to do this correctly and effectively, and make it possible to have two periods on there, I'm going to be really careful about the way I do this. So I'm going to actually give myself three vertical asymptotes, just like you see down here in my little sketch. So I'm going to do it, it's at the, um, what I call the half periods. So. Let's say there's one right here. This would be. There'll be one right here. And there's got to be twice that distance. So like one right here. So notice I'm gonna have to extend it a little bit to the right, but I'm just doing this because I want to make sure I have a nice two periods. Because as you probably see, um, it doesn't always look pretty otherwise. This is all about making things look pretty. So, um, my shape's taken care of. Well, not yet. Not yet. I just grabbed vertical asymptotes, didn't I? So I need to actually put the shape on here. So I want to make it nice and smooth and very cool looking. Oh, that's perfect. Love that. Do the same thing over here. So, realize it's not quite as wide as it was supposed to be, but. And again, over on this side, I could do another one if I really wanted to. Um, yeah, you know what, I'm here. So we'll have to make sure this is a period and this is a period. Okay, so there we go. We've graphed, um, actually, three periods of tangent. So, um, overachiever. Um, now we want to actually get on to the label read, though, the real crux of this stuff. So in order to do this, we're going to look at and find all these pieces of information and then plot them all onto the graph, or label them on the graph, to make this set of tangents fit our tangents. So, um, what we've got to do is, let's first just find all the pieces. So I think the most important one is always the period, so I'm going to start there. So the period, remember, for tangent and cotangent is different. It's not 2 pi, but it's only pi. So in fact here it's going to be pi over whatever the coefficient of x is, which in this case is 3, so my period is going to be pi over 3. And since I'm definitely going to need my half period in order to label the vertical asymptotes, my half period is just going to be half of 2 pi, or excuse me, half of pi over 3, which is pi over 6. So that's going to be important later on, so I'm going to have that on there. Okay, so next, let's look at the amplitude, except ugh, there's no amplitude on tangent, because as you can see, it's not like there's not like a max and min. It goes from negative infinity all the way up to infinity for its range. So instead, of, it's kind of a vertical stretch factor. It's a stretch, you know, like it makes it taller. So to find this, it's just the same as finding the amplitude. So I'm going to call it stretch. So that stretch is going to be absolute value of 6, which is um, 6 not a real surprise there. Okay, next let's do the phase shift. Let's find it. We'll do all the hard stuff after that. So my phase shift or starting point is going to be whatever makes 3x plus pi equal 0. So this is one of those times where we'll actually want to save it. So minus pi. Oh. So we want to actually um, solve the argument equal to 0 this time. So minus pi minus pi will be 3x equals negative pi divided 
divided by 3, it's going to tell me that my phase shift is negative pi over 3. So I will label that right here. So I've got that. That's an important piece. And again, we'll find the extremes and boundaries here in just a second. It's a little bit tougher. And now, um, the last piece, my vertical shift. I can do that in the same color. It's pretty straightforward. My Vs is going to be whatever's being added. In this case, it's plus 4 or up 4. So I'll label this as y equals 4. And so now I'm set up to actually do the meat and potatoes part of this graphing. Okay, ready to label stuff? I'm ready to label stuff. Let's go. So, um, first, before we can actually start labeling things, what I want to pay attention to is the fact that, you know, if we're going to label it as, you know, like one period from the phase shift, one period back from the phase shift, we've got to be careful about doing this. So if we look at our shape here, if we say that it's starting right there, our period has to go from the center all the way up to the vertical asymptote and come back to the center. So our actual one period away is right there. Same thing going the other way. It's got to go down to the vertical asymptote and hit there again. So that'll be the end of my one period. So we're going to have to keep that in mind when we actually graph this. And then when we check it in our window, it's going to be a little bit tougher, I think. But we'll be okay. So first, if we want to label those two points, we can do that by adding our period to our phase shift. So our, um, what I call these last time, like the right end and the last left end. So my right end even though it's not technically an ending, so it's kind of a tricky name. Well, that's what I get for making it up as I go. Um, the right end is going to go from the phase shift plus the period. So my period is, oh, it's pi over 3. So how interesting, that's going to mean my right end is going to be 0. So this is actually at 0, and I can kind of draw in the y-axis. That's really nice. So that's cool to see, so we'll keep that in mind, that's nice. My left end, it's going to be negative pi over 3, my phase shift, minus my period. So in this case, that's going to be negative 2 pi over 3. So I can label the other one right here, negative 2 pi over 3. Now, um, I also want to kind of get some the vertical asymptotes label, as it says here in step 7. So to do that, I need to add my half period. So um, to get this vertical asymptote, the first one, and I'll probably do um, I'll probably do all three of these guys in this case, even though I probably only had to do two. Um, to get my first VA, I'm going to go from my phase shift plus half a period. So my half a period is pi over six. That's going to give me um, it's going to give me negative pi over six. So this guy is at negative. 6. To find the next one, I can add pi over 6 again. That's going to give me 0 right there. That makes sense. Two half periods added to a whole period. And then to get there, I'll just add one more pi over 6. And well, 0 plus pi over 6 is just going to be pi over 6. So I think we can kind of see that that one fits. That one makes sense. Okay. And again, if I wanted to go back, I could minus pi over 6 again, but I don't feel like it right now. I've got two of them labeled. Okay, so that's ready. So now we just need to take care of the vertical parts. So now there's no amplitude here, so it's really just going to be a matter of kind of labeling it so we have some context. So in order to do this, I'm just going to, um, like somewhere in between, like a quarter of a period, like right there. Yeah, so I'm a little bit off here. A quarter of the period has kind of a shape point, so I'm just going to try and match it right there. And then I'll do the same thing I do for sine and cosine. So my vertical shift is 4. So this kind of shape point would be at 4 plus 6, this is 10. And then 4 minus 6, which would be negative 2. So if I wanted to... I'm worried about this one, like this one's going to be close. If I wanted to draw in the x-axis, I'd probably have to go right about here. This, this could blow up in my face. I don't know yet. I'll have to find out. And okay, I submit that with any luck, we have graphed y equals 4 plus 6 tangent of 3x plus pi. We just have to actually see if it matches up on the calculator. Putting a tangent function on the calculator is actually going to be probably the trickiest one of any of them, because trying to figure out what to put for our um, 
max of the mins will be a little bit tough, but we can mostly read off our graph. We're just going to have to be real selective when we look at it. So there's our graph from the cosine. So let's clear this guy out and let's start looking at it. So first let's type in the function. So 4 plus tangent. Oops, sorry. I already screwed it up. 4 plus 6 tangent of 3x plus pi. calculator. Okay, now, and my mode's already in radian, so let's go to the min and max. So for the x min and x max, I'm going to use the end of this period, so this guy won't be there. You can imagine that'll be gone. So negative 2 pi over 3. Then I'm going to use pi over 6 as my other one. So hopefully we'll get this picture. So negative 2 pi over 3 first. Six. That last vertical asymptote, and then for my ray or my scale, let's just go pi over six. That's kind of about right. Now for my minute max, I could go negative two to ten, and I mean that would be totally fine since that's what my graph is. I've got negative two to ten, but notice that my graph's kind of extending up there. Those are just kind of shape points. So I'm actually just going to give myself a little bit of leeway. I'm going to go from, I don't know, let's go from, what do you say, let's go negative 10 up to 25. I don't know, I'm just making up numbers. It doesn't really matter. It's not perfect. But this should get me close. And for here, I'll just give myself a scale of 5 since I chose 2 multiples of 5. Okay, ready? Here we go. Not bad. Not bad. I really don't think that was bad. Um, I see already that the shape fits. We got because again we cut this off. We went from negative two pi over three over. We got a vertical asymptote there, there, and there. Got this positive stink lines right in there. It's all good. Yeah, I wanted to take it. I think I think this actually worked really nicely. So in fact, um, definitely the hardest function. Probably the longest video that I'll have in this series. Um, but hey, we graphed some positive stink lines, and we got a very um, full tangent graph put down. So hopefully this was useful, and you've gotten something out of it, because graphing tangent frustrates me. So there you go. Have a good night.